Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, Disney shills, to another episode of The Long Take, and today we are going to discuss a business decision that Warner Brothers made just a couple of days ago that could have huge ramifications for the film industry, specifically on the exhibition side. So a couple of days ago, Warner Brothers announced that they will be releasing their entire 2021 theatrical release slate on HBO Max with a concurrent theater release. With a concurrent theatrical release, similar to what they're doing with Wonder Woman 1984. The announcement for Wonder Woman 1984 was made a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't address it here on the channel, but I did post a couple of tweets regarding my thoughts about it, and I don't like it. I didn't like it then. I still don't like it. I would have gladly waited for Wonder Woman 1984 to hit theaters six months later when it was safe to do so, than watch it for the first time at home, because I think that's a movie that deserves to be seen on the biggest screen possible, which obviously is a nice transition into the discussion today. I think Warner Brothers is making a mistake. I really do. And the reason I think this is because you are taking such huge releases like The Suicide Squad, Kong vs. Godzilla, The Matrix, Dune, and you're putting them on HBO Max. And yes, it may be more convenient, and maybe in the short term it may be safer. But I think you're really damaging the movie-going experience, and you're robbing people of that experience who really enjoy going to the movie theaters. And I think that's a problem. And yes, it's easy for me to say this because I'm one of those people. I love going to the theater. If I have the choice, I'm going to see every single one of those movies in theaters, but only if it's safe to do so. It doesn't matter what you do at home. You cannot replicate the movie-going experience at home. It doesn't matter if you turn off the lights. It doesn't matter if you have a 72-inch 4K HDR Dolby Vision television with the best sound system. It doesn't matter. It's not the same. You cannot replicate the communal experience of going to the theaters, and I think that's really, really unfortunate. And I think this decision is going to have very serious ramifications for the future. I don't think it's going to kill theaters. I think that talk is a little bit exaggerated. I don't think this one decision in this one moment is going to be the end of movie theaters as we once knew them. But I do think that it's going to have a huge impact on the exhibition side of filmmaking. It's going to affect how, when, and where people watch movies. And I understand the argument for streaming. I really do. Sometimes it's more convenient. Sometimes especially during a situation like the one we currently find ourselves in, it's safer. But I think it's important to preserve the theatrical experience. And realistically, there was always going to be a shift to streaming services, but I never imagined that shift would completely eliminate movie theaters altogether. And the reason I think this is such a big deal is because these are premier movies. You know, these are not movies like a B-horror film being moved from the theater to a streaming service. You know, that's not what this is. These are big-name movies. These are blockbusters. Wonder Woman 1984 was going to be one of the movies that enticed audiences to return to the theaters once it was safe. And now they don't have to worry about that anymore because they can just watch it on their couch on Christmas Day. 
and I just, I don't like that, you know, and I'm not trying to speak for everybody, I certainly don't speak for everybody, this is just my opinion, that's what the long take is about, and I think it's really, really unfortunate, but that said, this will also have an impact on the so-called streaming wars, and there are a lot of eyes on Disney right now. Are they going to make that move with Black Widow, put it on Disney Plus using the Premier Access feature, similar to what they did with Mulan? And the reason I think there's a lot of discussion is because the Disney investors meeting is next Tuesday at the time of this recording. By the time this video is uploaded, it will have already happened. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think Disney is going to make the same decision. I don't think they're going to follow suit with Warner Brothers because this is what I honestly believe is going to happen. A lot of people are making the argument that Warner Brothers is doing this as a one-year plan. Next year will hopefully be the year that we recover from the pandemic because we will finally have a president that not only takes the situation seriously, but hopefully by the third quarter of 2021, we can get the vaccine to most of the country which would hypothetically allow us to return to theaters. So a lot of people are arguing that maybe this is just the plan for 2021, but it's not. These are huge movies, and they also did this with Wonder Woman. And yes, I know the decision in regards to Wonder Woman largely comes from the fact that we are currently in the middle of the pandemic, and it is worse than ever. Stay home, wash your hands. But, the fact is, if this was a one-year plan for Warner Brothers, I don't think they would have rushed into doing this. This is their plan. This is Warner Brothers' plan moving forward. Because there was a lot of confusion when HBO Max launched, because not a lot of people knew the difference between HBO Max, HBO Now, and HBO. This is an attempt by Warner Brothers to save their fledgling streaming service. And I think it's probably going to be their strategy moving forward. Because you look at what's coming to HBO Max next year. You have Dune, The Matrix, Godzilla vs. Kong, The Suicide Squad. Those are huge films. And then you have an HBO Max exclusive like the director's cut of Justice League that's going to draw in subscribers. And as it is, they're already kind of pulling a little bit of a shady move by removing the seven-day free trial before Wonder Woman is on the service, which is really unfortunate because that's how I was planning on watching it. So now I don't know what I'm going to do. But that's beside the point. I don't think Disney is going to follow Warner Brothers. Because what I think is going to happen is Disney will do the opposite. And what I mean by this is Disney will strike a deal with a theater chain or several theater chains. And they are going to become the studio that provides the premier theatrical experience. While every other studio like Universal and Warner Brothers is making the move to streaming... Disney will be the studio that gives you the theater experience. The large screen, the perfect sound, the communal setting, the environment of being in a room with other people that love movies. I th think that's what Disney's going to do, and I think that's an incredibly smart decision on their part, if that's what they decide to do. Because I do think it's important to preserve the theatrical experience. Now, I've spent so much of this episode talking about why I think this is a bad decision. But there could also be some benefits to this as well. And I feel it's only fair to acknowledge those possible benefits. And the biggest of which, for me, is that you will lose a lot of the audience that doesn't truly love movies. 
There have been way too many times when I have gone to the movies and I am just trying to sit down and watch a movie and there is some asshole who is either texting, talking to their buddies, or f just smoking, smoking in the theater. If you can get those guys out of the theater, good. Good, because then the theater is preserved as a place for people who actually love movies. People who want to be there. A lot of times, there are people that don't actually care about the film that they're supposedly watching. They're just there because they want to go to the movies. They want something to do. And they treat it as if they're hanging out at home on their couch. So maybe if Warner Brothers decides to go with this strategy for the foreseeable future, you will have those kind of people hopefully staying home, eating Doritos, and smoking on their couch, watching the Batman, instead of bothering me while I'm in the theater trying to absorb the film the way it was meant to be watched. So I see that as a good thing. And again, maybe some people find streaming more convenient. Maybe they think it's better. Maybe people would rather watch movies at home. That's fine. I wouldn't. That's just me. But this is going to have some serious ramifications one way or the other. And it will be interesting to see how this plays out. A lot of this was obviously not written. I did not have a script for this because the news was just too big to put this off. I needed to address it as soon as possible. So that's why a lot of it is kind of just me rhapsodizing about why I love movie theaters. But I do think it's important to preserve the theatrical experience. Because as it is, movie theaters should have gotten some relief package from the government back in March or April, because this year was always going to be a wash for them. With this strategy, I don't know how much money theaters are going to make from movies, because even though movies like The Suicide Squad and Dune will show in theaters as well as be available to watch on HBO Max, I don't know what the division of revenue is going to be there between the studio and the theater. There's a certain way that it works right now, but I don't know how that's going to work post-pandemic and with this new business model. So it will be interesting to see and definitely something to keep an eye on when this happens. And we're obviously at the end of 2020, so we don't have too long of a wait to find out what's going to happen with this, how it's going to work, and ultimately whether or not it's successful. I want to close this by saying I do think the theatrical experience is important. I think nothing beats watching a movie for the first time on the big screen. Some of the best movie-going experiences of my life just off the top of my head, The Dark Knight, Jurassic World, The Force Awakens, I'm not even a serious Star Wars fan. I went as a casual viewer and I enjoyed it because of the energy that the audience brought. Dunkirk, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, Blade Runner 2049, Knives Out, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The theatrical experience is so special. And for those of us that love it and love movies, we need to preserve it. So support theaters. Save theaters. Support your local independent theater. There are plenty of Cinemarks and AMCs around me, but I choose to go to an independently owned local theater because it's just so much better because they care. The screens are better, the seats are better, the service is better, everything is better. Support theaters, let's save them, because at the end of the day, no matter what Warner Brothers does, we decide the demand, because we are the consumers. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you would like to tell me how wrong I am, well, feel free to do so in the comment section below, because that's what it's there for. Other than that, may your heart be your guiding key.